The iPhone 13 has leaked over and over again, and Tim Cook is not happy. Usually Apple does not get involved when it comes to leaks and rumors and speculation about upcoming products they may or may not be working on, but that is not the case anymore. Apple is now fighting back directly against members of the Apple leaking community, and if their efforts are successful, Apple leaks may never happen again. And a big thanks to Hover for sponsoring this video. I'm not ashamed to admit that I am beyond just a little obsessed with Apple. I think like many of you, I have this fascination to know what the company is doing, what product categories are going to enter next, and I just love to know every little tidbit of news on what could be changing with the iPhone 13 or upcoming MacBook Pros. And I think many people share that enthusiasm that I have as well, and for good reason. Apple is one of the most successful, one of the most valuable companies in the world. They're typically working on some of the latest and greatest cutting edge technology, and everything they do is extremely secretive and ultra private. I'm sure you've seen blogs and websites devoted to Apple rumors and YouTube channels like this one, which just have a ton of fun breaking down the rumors, kind of putting the puzzle pieces together and letting you know everything you need to know about upcoming Apple products because we just love the company so much. And because there is just so much demand to know what Apple could or could not be doing next, little rumors can quickly become big stories and bring with them a lot of attention, both good and yes, bad as well. And I previously did a whole video kind of recapping how Apple leaks happen, who's leaking information on the upcoming iPhone, who are the analysts and journalists in this story. If you want to know kind of how Apple leaks happen, check out the video down below or up here. But in this video, let me tell you how Apple is trying to fight back against those leaks and make sure they never happen again. Now, what really sparked a bunch of controversy lately was a number of legal correspondences sent from Apple Commission law firms to various members of the international Apple leaking community, specifically Concept Creator, who makes some beautiful renders of Apple products and other tech products on his channel, and Kang, an ultra mysterious Apple leaker who has in the past predicted uh, specifics on upcoming iPhones, iPads, HomePods, and more before those details really became official. Both say that they received notices from legal firms associated with Apple, sort of warning them and giving them a stern talking to on discussing or disclosing any possible information, true or not, about upcoming unreleased Apple products. And concept designer Ben Geskin, who previously did a lot of really high profile iPhone renders, also says that he went through a similar experience about a year ago, and after negotiations back and forth and threats of legal action and fines, he ultimately just decided to delete all posts that Apple wasn't happy with and stop his sort of Apple concept renders activity seemingly for good. Immediately, it's sort of unclear what Apple's end game here is and what legal action they could really take to bring these people to court or to find them, to get them to stop sort of creating renders or talking about Apple information. It's a little unclear what Apple's end game here is, but people are taking it seriously. Kang, for example, says he's going to sort of tone back some of his Apple-related talk, and he will no longer be posting riddles or dreams, basically alluding to the fact that he may not be uh, sharing more information about upcoming unreleased Apple products, at least not anytime soon, if ever. Concept Creator also took to Twitter to sort of talk about the situation, and ultimately, he's also confused on what really Apple wants him to do, and what is okay and not okay according to them. I don't know what they want, honestly, at the moment, so it's very weird and very confusing how I am talking to a middle person uh, that doesn't know where the line lies. It's a very blurry and thick line on um, what is allowed and what is not allowed. Am I allowed to make an iPhone 13 based on every single information, every single cap model that is online, visible for everyone to see? Can I make that? Am I allowed to? Don't know. They don't know. So why is Apple doing this? What legal footing do they have uh, to kind of stop these people from creating renders or talking about unreleased Apple products? What is sort of their goal here and what is their argument? And what we're learning from Kang's situation, which is presumably probably along the same lines for concept creator and Ben Gaskin, is that Apple does not want them to discuss this information because they do not want to give competitors any kind of advantage or sort of early look at what they could be doing. And also, quote, mislead customers because what is disclosed may not be accurate. 
And on one hand, to sort of play both sides here, this does sort of make sense. If you have rumors about Apple removing the notch on the iPhone 13, or having a portless iPhone for the iPhone 14, or uh, making new in-ear wireless headphones, uh, that is a lot of valuable information that could go to competitors. People wanna be able to adopt the design language that Apple is going to adopt, to make products that Apple is going to make, and the sooner they know that information, the quicker they can get those products from concept to market, which does sort of make sense why Apple would like to keep things hush-hush so they could do things first and have a more advantageous lead over the competition. There's also just no denying that Apple rumors alone can not only shake the tech space, but also sort of affect the business and financial markets as well. You might remember when there was talk of Apple and Hyundai potentially working together in one way or another on an Apple car, it greatly helped Hyundai stock go up. And then when news broke that they were no longer in talks, rumor has it, the stock went down as a result of that. So rumors alone can move the market and Apple doesn't want uh, rumors about an upcoming product they may or may not be making to sort of affect their financial bottom line or even affect how others view them in the tech space, especially potential investors. And then of course, there's also the simple reality of Apple not being happy when people are upset with them for not releasing a feature that the rumor mill said was going to be there. For example, with the iPhone 12 lineup, ProMotion was a done deal, it was gonna be a thing. We had seen leaks and rumors suggesting it was going to happen, but then when that announcement came, ProMotion was nowhere to be found. Now, either Apple had planned all along to not include ProMotion, or maybe they pulled it last minute, we'll never know, but officially on stage, ProMotion was never discussed, and the iPhone 12 never seemed like it was going to have it, and that was the story Apple presented. But, because so many people uh, looked at the leaks and the rumors, they were disappointed and upset with Apple for not delivering a feature that they technically never promised they would. And we have seen time and time again how leaks and rumors and all that stuff in the rumor mill can really take away the surprise or the one more thing that Apple had been planning all along. I think the ultimate example of this is with the iPhone 4 back in 2010. After that horrible Gizmodo leak happened just weeks earlier, Apple knew that what they were showing off for the first time on stage was not being seen for the first time by the audience, and even Steve Jobs just had to acknowledge it. Stop me if you've already seen this. <laughs> So that is sort of Apple's argument in this case, and hopefully I presented it somewhat well based off of the limited knowledge we know, but now let me play devil's advocate and talk about the other side. I think it's unfair, and there's a really clear distinction between those who are inside of Apple getting information uh, knowingly to try to sell for financial gain or some sort of quid pro quo, which an Apple employee was recently uh, accused of, than someone just making renders and concepts based off of generally publicly available leaks and rumors and just getting excited about what Apple could do next. There obviously is a very fine line there, and I don't think it's fair of Apple to classify all those people as one and the same. Before we continue, let's take a quick break and I'll tell you a little bit about this video sponsor, Hover. I love Hover because they make registering a domain name so, so simple. There's no annoying upsells, no hoops to jump through. The entire process is so simple, seamless. You can do it all in just a couple of clicks. Just head to hover.com slash applecircle, type in the name you want, and Hover will show you all the available extensions for that domain, including the classics like .com, .org, and .net, but also some of the newer, more fun and relevant ones like .app, .store, dot reviews, and many, many more. There are so many important reasons to have your own custom domain name these days. Whether it's for your online business, you just wanna kind of establish your presence and personal brand online, and one of the biggest ones these days is email. Robert526 at gmail.com and Robert108 at hotmail.com sound cool, but are not very professional and not very memorable. That's why you want something simple like Robert at theapplecircle.com. Having that custom domain is so important and really helps you stand out and build up your personal brand online. And best of all, Hover has all the tools you need to get your hobby site, your online business off the ground. With the ability to connect your registered domain name to all the major website builders with just a couple of clicks. And if you ever run into any issues, you've got access to best in class customer support that is always there to help. So whether you're looking to start that online business, you wanna build up your digital presence online or just snag that custom domain name for that email address, Hover is the one place to go to make it all happen. I love Hover, they make the whole registration process so simple, they take care of everything and I know you guys will love it too. So hit that link down below to learn more or go to hover.com slash applecircle to get 10% off your first purchase. It is awesome, I love Hover. Hit that link down below or again, go to hover.com slash applecircle for 10% off your first purchase and start customizing and personalizing your online brand today. 
And look, I'm sorry to tell Apple, but leaks happen all the time. It is not just something in the tech world. It's not just something to Apple specifically. Leaks happen to all businesses, government entities around the world. Leaks of information happen all the time, and it's not specific just to Apple. So as much as Apple would not like us to talk about rumors of upcoming changes to the iPhone 13, or uh, new information we're getting on AirPods Max, or maybe some new technology that Apple is working on, it's not their place to stop us from doing it, specifically not really legally. And that's probably the best defense for many in the Apple League community, at least here in the US, is legal protection and sort of legal ground to stand on and probably why those types of letters weren't set out to leakers here in the US. Apple doesn't like us talking about iPhone rumors, but that doesn't mean they can legally shut it down, at least not here in the US. That's probably not the case in other countries and territories around the world, which is why Apple might be starting with this effort internationally where laws are a bit different. And look, at the same time as information on the iPhone 13, for example, those rumors could in a sense mislead consumers on what could be coming or not be coming this fall, it also at the same time generates a ton of excitement, not only in the Apple community of enthusiasts who are super excited to see what the next iPhone could be, but it also generates conversations among average people. It's great for Apple's PR and marketing, and this sort of excitement and this hype gets people talking about Apple and gets them excited, and in turn can sort of boost their stock price as more people wanna jump in and invest in a company kind of leading uh, the technology industry, and uh, just for those who are very excited to see what Apple could be doing next. Doesn't always happen, but it does happen happen a lot more than I think people think. Also, I know a lot of you out there believe that Apple is making up their own rumors or sort of planting stories to fabricate uh, their own excitement into the rumor mill. I don't know if that happens or not, but uh, what do they say? No press can be bad press, bad press is still good press, whatever it is. Apple, uh, whether they like it or not, gets a lot of attention, and that attention does usually mean good things for the company. Ultimately, I really do see both sides to this argument. On one hand, I see what Apple is saying. I know there are hundreds, if not thousands, of dedicated engineers and team members who work specifically on a product or a service all year long just to want to share it with the world at their own time and on their own terms, and they don't want that spoiled by the leaks and rumors that come out at various times all throughout the year. I totally get that, and I don't want to mislead consumers on anything either, and I get that point as well. But at the same time, there is a core number of enthusiasts who just love Apple. They love the leaks and the rumors and they don't wanna be malicious about it. They just wanna share that excitement and talk about it and just dream and speculate what could be happening next. It's the same for the movie universe. It's the same for other tech companies and other uh, genres of hobbies and uh, other things around the world as well and other things you could be into. This is not an Apple tech exclusive thing. And I don't think just because Apple doesn't like it, means they should be able to stop it from happening at all. So it's a lot to break down here. I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Who's the good guy here? Who's the bad guy? Do you think Apple has the right and the place to stop these leaks and rumors from happening, to stop concept artists from sort of envisioning what the future iPhone and Apple products could be like? Or do you think Apple is totally out of line here and leaks and rumors should continue as their place in sort of this free speech society we all wanna be a part of? Curious, what are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. I'm curious to hear where you stand on this topic. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I will see you in the next one.